Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This year's day of action on care is coming at the most auspicious time as the world undergoes a very challenging period occasioned by the sudden outbreak of the deadly coronavirus across the world, otherwise known as COVID-19, which has caused a lot of health issues, including fatalities, also economic issues, but importantly, uh, labor market issues. This year certainly has been a very challenging period for healthcare workers around the world, and they have certainly been encountering very serious risk. The theme of this year's event is very suicide, as it highlights the urgent need for massive investment in the care sector, especially the healthcare sector. COVID-19 has fully exposed, ex exposed several countries, including our country, as having invested not enough in the healthcare institutions and even making it difficult to attain the universal health coverage, which is the priority of countries around the world. The pandemic has put everyone at risk, both the rich and the poor. And therefore, that's why the team investing in healthcare now or investing in care now is to draw more support and also demand for heavy investment in healthcare by our government and big businesses if we must keep a healthy society and productive human resource base. Apart from the open fact that our healthcare sector has been neglected for too long, healthcare workers have been subjected to unfair treatment for a very long time. And before I go further, let me use this auspicious occasion to once again call on the federal government to pay the two month salaries all health workers arising from the industrial dispute in 2008. This issue have gone through in 2018 place. This issue have gone through the National Industrial Court and the Alternate Dispute Resolution Mechanism. And uh, the ruling of the court is that status quo ante to our understanding that is supposed to be maintained is to the effect that those workers have earned their salaries. Importantly also, the government must take serious the just concluded two weeks warning strike by the Joint Health Sector Union members, arising from the fact also that the dispute procedure, which all parties were subjected to, was not followed up by government. Apart from the open fact that the health sector had been neglected, one important issue is the fact also that the resources that have been allocated to the health sector for quite some time now have fallen beyond, below the standard that is prescribed by the African Union, which is supposed to be not less than 50% of our annual budget. Essentially, workers, as they are often called in the health sector, are also part of this challenging period. And in most cases, some of our workers have not been paid their salaries and allowances, owing also to the challenge of COVID-19, especially in the states and local government. And we want to call on government at all levels to continue to prioritize the payment of this very essential workers' salary and their allowances so that they can continue to serve, service the citizens. With the gargantua resources at our government disposal over the years, Nigeria certainly can afford to build an effective and modern health facility that can compute with other health facilities around the world. And therefore, this is high time that we consider prioritizing those issues so that the issue of medical tourism, which have also drained enormous resources, should also be addressed. And I think this is the right time to highlight those issues, because those issues certainly are issues that we need to prioritize uh, to give priority to the uh, care sector. We believe now is the time for our government at all levels also to direct their attention to the health sector. The current pandemic has shown the importance of health care and the fact that health or disease does not have boundary. Uh, because in whatever part of the world that a disease occurred, 
is certain that once actions are not taken, it then can be also taken to uh, other countries. Uh, because it has been said often that diseases do not have borders. And therefore, it is important for us to realize this fact. As a result also of the COVID-19 pandemic, our economy has suffered monumental losses, both in human and capital investment. No country will grow with such avoidable losses. The COVID-19 pandemic has also exposed the risk healthcare workers face daily in the course of their duties, as they don't have adequate and appropriate safeguards and safe gears. Access to their own health care is very important and also extending the same to their families as the frontline workers that are supposed to provide, protect the entire citizens. Healthcare workers also need standard daycare centers to keep their children when school are not open and or infants that are not in school or of school age to enable them to concentrate on their work. It is also important that we also grant paid leave especially medical leave that includes their immediate families. This will also help to curb the spread of airborne diseases they are exposed to in the places of work. It's also high time we take the issue of occupational health and safety important, especially for healthcare workers, uh, because it has been said that we must continue to protect these very golden uh, workers that at the end of the day will then protect the entire citizens. We will also advocate for full membership of trade unions by all health workers, including those in private facilities. This will give them coverage to demand for their rights and enable unions monitor safety standards at the centers and also in those healthcare facilities. This will form part of our campaign in support of healthcare workers across the country in both public and private sector. We will carry out this campaign in collaboration with our affiliate unions in the health sector, especially the National Association of Nigerian Nurses and Midwives and the Medical and Health Workers Union of Nigeria. Because the partnership is very important at this point in time uh, to make sure that we have a healthy workforce that can then deliver the universal health coverage, which is the priority of all the countries around the world. As we speak, the health coverage by the National Health Insurance Scheme in our country today is less than 10 percent, whereas other countries that started or behind Nigeria are almost at 100 percent coverage, i.e. Ghana and Rwanda. I think it's high time for us to try to see how to effectively ensure that all Nigerians have access to universal health coverage by making sure that this important social security coverage for health care to all citizens is also extended. Uh, there is no reason whatsoever for our coverage to continue to remain less than 10%. In conclusion, we reiterate our position that government must be ready to invest heavily in health care sector as no country survives without effective health care and a healthy people. And therefore, once again, comrades, while saluting our health care workers and also the caregivers, it is important for those points to be made because as we celebrate them today, it is important that the health of every Nigerian is certainly the responsibility of not only the health workers, but government at large. Whereas government workers have worked assiduously, even with less resources, less equipment, less technology, and less medicine to continue to provide health care services, but it's high time with the challenge of COVID-19 to invest heavily now in health care so that we can address this issue of medical tourism, which has been draining a lot of resources from our country. So once again, comrade, I want to thank you immensely, and I want to once again salute the courage and the tenacity of our health care workers and health care givers in all the sectors of the economy as we mark this very important day, a day of action on health care, on health care workers, and on health care givers. Thank you very much for your rapt attention.